So on day two, we talked about the derivative at a point. We said the derivative at any x value is the slope of the function at that instant. It's the instantaneous rate of change. So if our function, for example, is a constant horizontal line, a constant function, then it has a slope of zero. No matter what x value you pick on the function, the slope at that instant would be zero. That means the derivative function would equal zero at all times. So we also will have functions that are curvy and wavy and so forth, but sometimes those functions reach a peak or a valley, or sometimes they flatten just for an instant, like so. At those points, if you were to draw a tangent line at that instant, the tangent line would be perfectly flat and horizontal. So right at that instant, when the graph turns, the tangent line's horizontal, so the instantaneous rate of change is zero. The slope is zero at those instants. Again, if you drew a tangent line at that instant, the slope of that tangent line would be zero. So the derivative function equals zero at that instant. We call such a point a critical point. Anytime the derivative equals zero, we're gonna have a critical point. We call that a critical point on f of x. All right, next, if f of x has a sharp point, here's f of x, it's sharp point like so. So on the left side over here, for example, for the graph I've drawn, suppose this was like slope negative one. You see the derivative would be negative over here because the slope would be negative. And on the right side of that sharp point, maybe it had a slope of positive one. This instant change from being negative one to suddenly being positive one makes us wonder what exactly would the slope be at this exact point? Well, we say that the slope here is undefined at that instant. The limit of the slopes from the left side is different than the limit of the slopes from the right side. So right at that instant, we say the slope is undefined. In other words, the derivative is undefined at that instant. Same thing here. It looks like on this graph I drew, it has like slope positive one on the left and slope negative one on the right. And there was this sharp, abrupt change in the slope. We say that at that instant, the slope is undefined. We also call a point like this a critical point on f of x. So critical points are points where the derivative is zero or points where the derivative is undefined, places where it's flat or places where it has a sharp point. So here's a function f of x. I see that f of x is increasing here from negative infinity up to this point, then it decreases, then it's again increasing over here. Notice then that means if you pick any point along this span and you ask what is the slope of the tangent line at these points, well, the slope of the tangent lines would be positive, right? Because the tangent lines over here are going up, so their slopes are positive. In other words, the derivative would be positive. When f of x is increasing, the derivative is positive. Same thing over here. You drew the tangent lines, they would be increasing lines. So therefore, the derivative, the slope of those tangent lines would be positive numbers. Positive slope, positive derivative f of x is increasing tells us the derivative is positive and vice versa. If the derivative is positive, it means the original function f of x is increasing. Similarly, this function f of x on this span from here to here is decreasing. And again, if you pick any point along that span and look at the tangent line, those tangent lines would be going down. 
they would have negative slopes, which tells us the F prime would be negative for every single point along that decreasing span. If F of X is decreasing, then that tells us the derivative is negative. All right, concavity in a function, and what does that tell you about the derivative? If I have an increasing concave up f of x function, okay, so it's concave up like a bowl that's right side up. If I pick a point over here on the left side and think about the slope at that instant, so I'm just making up some numbers here, but this would be kind of a low value, right? This tangent line is kind of shallow. So for example, maybe it is slope two. If I travel further to the right, to here, and I draw a tangent line, it's steeper. It's a steeper tangent line. So if that was slope two over here, maybe this is slope seven, a bigger number. And then if I travel even further to the right, and I draw the tangent line, it's even steeper. So maybe this is like slope 10. I'm just making those numbers up, but you see the idea here is as you travel left to right on this concave up function, the slopes are getting bigger. The slopes are increasing. Slopes are increasing as you travel left to right. And again, the slopes at those instants is the derivative at those instants. So if f of x is concave up, the derivative is increasing for that span. This is also true if you have a decreasing concave up interval for f of x. Again, we always travel left to right when we describe our functions. So over here, if I start on the left-hand side and I draw a tangent line, it's very steep, this tangent line on the left side. Let's say this is something like slope negative 10 for example. Then as I travel to the right a little further, I pick another point and ask what is the derivative at that instant? So here's the tangent line. We see that that is less steep than the one we had a moment ago. So maybe this is like slope negative 7. It's less steep. And if I travel even further to the right, the tangent line over here is even less steep. So maybe it's like slope negative 2. This is a decreasing concave up function. As I traveled from left to right, look what happened to the slopes. They were negative 10, then negative 7, then negative 2. Those are increasing values. Those numbers are getting bigger. They're getting closer and closer to becoming 0, and then they would go into the positives, right? If that pattern continued, they would get bigger, 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 hit zero, and go into the positives. So the slopes are increasing again. Anytime your function is concave up, your f prime, your derivative, is increasing. Nothing at all to do with whether the function f was increasing or decreasing. All we're talking about is concavity. If f is concave up, the derivative values are increasing. All right, let's look at then concave down, and we're going to see the opposite pattern here. So if I have an increasing concave down function f, as I travel from left to right, let's look at the slopes. Over here, the slope is very, very positive, very big positive number, because the, the tangent line is very steep, so maybe slope 10. I travel to the right, draw a tangent line. It's less steep, maybe slope 7. As I travel even further to the right, it's very shallow, maybe slope 2. What's happening to the slopes? What's happening to the derivatives? The instantaneous rate of change of the function, it's 10, then 7, then 2. It's decreasing. The slopes are decreasing. The derivative values are decreasing. Similarly then, if we have a decreasing concave down function like this, as I start from left to right, 
this function here, if I start on the left side, it's a very shallow decrease. So this might be slope negative 2. As I travel to the right, that tangent line is getting steeper. So it's more like slope negative 7. And then I travel even further to the right, it's more like slope negative 10. These numbers are getting more and more and more and more negative. They are decreasing. The slopes are decreasing. If your function f is concave down, your derivative is decreasing. Doesn't matter if your function is increasing or decreasing. If it's concave down function, the derivative is decreasing. All right, and then lastly, inflection point. f of x is an inflection point when the derivative changes from increasing to decreasing. So for example, let's say we have here a function f of x. I have just drew an example here where my f of x is increasing on this entire span. So it's increasing concave down, and then it changes to increasing concave up. So this point here is the inflection point. So from all the things I said above, if I were to think about what's going on with the derivative on these intervals, if f is increasing, that tells me the derivative is positive. And if f is concave down, that tells me the derivative is decreasing. Okay, then up here we have different behavior. f is increasing, which tells me the derivative is positive. Positive slopes. f is concave up, which tells me the derivative is increasing. All right, so look at the change that's occurred. On both, the derivative is positive. So the derivative is positive for this entire span, shown. But the derivative was decreasing, and then it suddenly starts to increase. So for example, if I drew the derivative, it would be going down, reach that point at the lowest it gets, and then start to increase. So if I were to draw f prime of x, it's going down, then going up, matching up here with this inflection point being the lowest point on the derivative. We will see a similar sort of behavior for the other shapes that can occur. If you have a function f of x that's concave up and then changes to concave down, then we will find, oh, let me label that as f, you will see on its derivative that it's increasing on this entire span. However, this one is concave up, so the derivative is increasing, and then it changes to concave down, so this would be f prime. And if you did f going down, like so, again, that's f. If you were to think about the behavior of f prime, f is decreasing, so the entire derivative would be negative below the x-axis but I see that it's concave down, then concave up, so that means the derivative is going down, then going up, so the derivative would have that shape. And lastly, if you had it f going down, concave up, then going down, concave down, when you draw the derivative function, the derivative will be negative because the function f is going down. However, it's f is concave up, so that means the derivative is going up. And then f is concave down, which means the derivative is going down. So f prime would look like that in that general region.